I use this Sparkle Orc Intel A580 graphics card in a budget gaming PC build I put together and I wanted to do a review on it to help you decide if it would be a good option for you. Now I bought this card a few months ago for $180 and I thought that was a pretty good deal for a card that promised to be a solid 1080p performer. However, the price has changed on the card and you can now get it for $150. But even with the price drop, should you get this A580 from Sparkle? In this video, I'm going to go over all of this graphics card's features and specifications, and I'll show you how it performed across a handful of games at 1080p resolution so that you can determine whether or not the Sparkle Orc A580 is the right graphics card for your needs. But first, let me show you the unboxing process, and then we'll go over those specs and features. The A580 is a PCIe 4.0 GPU that comes with 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM, and this A580 from Sparkle operates with a boost clock that can run up to 2200 MHz. Sparkle recommends that you use at minimum a 600W power supply to power their A580, and it does require dual 8-pin PCIe power connections. This card measures in at 222mm long, and features a 2.2 slot design. So it is a fairly compact card and it would be a good option for anyone looking to build a budget oriented small form factor system. The Sparkle Orc A580 comes with a dual fan design that features Sparkle's torn cooling configuration. It has a nice looking all metal black backplate with the Sparkle logo in white lettering. The Sparkle logo on the side of the card is LED lit, and with Sparkle's thermal sync feature, the logo actually changes color based on the temperature it's running at. The unique aesthetic feature of the Orc A580 though is its blue fan casing. I'm not quite sure how to feel about this design to be honest, because on the one hand, on its own, the Orc A580's blue fan casing helps it stand out, and I do think it looks really good. But on the other hand, the blue color scheme is going to make this card hard to build around from an aesthetic standpoint. There are just no other components out there that will tie into the color of this card. And this is even more true when you consider the budget range that the A580 makes the most sense for, where budget hardware is going to be limited aesthetically by default. I wonder if Sparkle would have been better off just giving their cards an all black design. But what do you guys think? Do you like the blue design of the Sparkle Orc? Or do you think they should have chosen a more neutral color scheme? In any case, aesthetics are a small concern for a budget-oriented system. What's going to matter most is its price to performance. So let's get to how the Sparkle A580 performed in games. I paired the A580 with an AMD Ryzen 5 5500 processor and 16GB of DDR4 3600MHz CL18 memory, and I benchmarked the system in 6 different titles at 1080p resolution. I tested it on Cyberpunk 2077, Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Power World. In Cyberpunk, the A580 exceeded our expectations, averaging just over 70 frames per second on the Ultra preset and 80 frames per second on the High preset. Of course, we did not test the game at any of its ray tracing presets, as the A580 wouldn't have been able to handle it. However, even as we've seen from the RX 6750 XT I used in my $800 gaming PC build, even that more expensive GPU struggled to run Cyberpunk with ray tracing maxed out. Overall though, the game ran really smoothly at the Ultra preset at 1080p resolution despite being a fairly taxing game to run. That's pretty impressive for a budget oriented card. Baldur's Gate 3 also ran exceptionally well, averaging 86 frames per second on the Ultra preset and just over 100 frames per second on the medium preset. The game also ran very smoothly with no stuttering issues. In Fortnite, we tested the game at the epic, high, and medium presets, and also ran the game in performance mode. The A580 did struggle to maintain a playable frame rate at the epic preset, failing to average 40 frames per second. It even struggled to hit 60 frames per second on the high preset. But there's no real reason to play Fortnite maxed out, and at the medium preset and in performance mode, the A580 was able to handle the game just fine. And averaging nearly 150 frames per second in performance mode, the A580 is strong enough to where you could pair it with a higher refresh rate display to gain an advantage in a competitive title like Fortnite. The one game that the A580 just could not run at all was Starfield, 
The game was unplayable as the A580 was only able to average 19 frames per second on the lowest setting. Starfield is notoriously difficult to run, so I wasn't expecting great results. However, I was a bit surprised to see this low of performance. I do think this is more of a driver-related issue and that there is a chance that Intel could release new drivers in the future that would make Starfield playable on the A580. But ultimately, if you were looking for a GPU to run Starfield, this graphics card won't be the right option for you. A better option for Starfield would probably be the RX 6600. It will cost a little bit more, but it is able to handle Starfield. I also tested the A580 and Ryzen 5 5500 in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and again, the A580 provided adequate performance at 1080p resolution. The A580 was able to average 66 frames per second on the Ultra preset and just over 70 frames per second on the High preset. The game did stutter a little bit on the higher presets, but not enough to ruin the experience. It did run much smoother at the Medium preset, and the graphics quality was still good there. Overall though, the performance was good enough to make playing AC Valhalla enjoyable. I tested this graphics card in Power World and ran it at the Epic, High, Medium, and Low presets. The A580 wasn't quite able to average 60 frames per second at the Epic and High presets, but the game was still playable at those settings. Turning the settings down to Medium and Low though, and the game ran much better. And the game doesn't look too bad with the graphics settings turned down. Power World is still in early access, so I assume the performance will only get better as the game advances through development. So in the end, if you were looking for a budget graphics card that was able to handle Power World, the A580 will definitely allow you to do so. I also wanted to test the A580 in some non-demanding titles, and so I ran it in Valorant, Rocket League, and League of Legends. In League of Legends, the A580 was able to stay close to 200 frames per second for the majority of the matches I played. In Rocket League, the A580 averaged in the mid-200s for frames per second, and the game ran really smoothly. The same was true for Valorant. The A580 mainly stayed in the mid to upper 200s, and it was really no challenge to run. So for Rocket League and Valorant, or other non-demanding competitive titles, those are games where you'll benefit from using a higher refresh rate display, and the A580 was able to deliver a high enough average frame rate to where you could look at pairing it with a 144Hz or higher refresh rate monitor to gain that advantage. Ultimately, the Sparkle Orc A580 was able to deliver very good results at 1080p resolution. Now, it wasn't perfect. I couldn't run Starfield on it, but I do think that was more of a driver issue. So it could be that in the future, Intel could release a driver and that could make Starfield playable on this card. But this card did run everything else I threw at it on either the maximum graphics setting or the setting just below maximum all while averaging at least 60 frames per second on average. And you really can't ask much more out of a budget-oriented graphics card than that. So with that being said, I definitely recommend the Sparkle Orc A580 to anyone who is working with a tight budget and who wants to be able to play a mix of titles, both demanding and non-demanding, at 1080p resolution. Overall, it's a great card at a great price. In any case, that does it for this review. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you next time.